I'm going to show you how to make Cotton Iso's gingerbread house from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser, a selection of threads, some of them are metallics, some pins, masking tape, my squizzers and my fabrics and batting cut to size. In this video I'm going to show you how to use metallics and also we're going to do some fussy cutting. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below, along with lots of other information, so do take the time to have a look. Start off by hooping your two layers of wash away stabiliser. And then we're going to pin around the top edge of the hoop, and that will stop our stabiliser from being pulled down as the design is stitched. Just take a pin, rest it on top of your inside hoop, push it through the stabiliser, bring it back through and back through the stabiliser again and that will anchor it and you're going to do that on all four sides. The larger your hoop the more pins that you will use around the edge. Load your file into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to cut your stitches. Place your fabric for the house over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to cut your stitches. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four and that's going to do the zigzagging around the raw edges of your fabric. You're now going to stitch round number five and that's going to give you a placement outline for your peppermint candy. Place your fabric for the peppermint candy over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six to secure it. Place your fabric for the candy cane on the right hand side of the house over the outline and you want it to come up here and then tape your fabric in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven to secure it. Place your fabric for the candy cane on this side of the house over the outline and tape that in place as well. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number eight to secure it. I'm going to trim back my fabrics just a little bit because we're going to stitch the window next and my fabric's going to get in the way. 
I'm just going to roughly chop that off. And the same for the bottom here. You're now going to stitch round number nine and that's going to give you a placement outline for your window. We're now going to do some fussy cutting and in my prior planning and preparation um, I've stitched out all the outlines so that I could sort my fabric scraps for this project. I'm going to be using this fabric and I want the gingerbread man to be in the window. So I've drawn a, a line on some clear plastic and you can use packaging plastic for this. It's a good way to recycle it. Um, and I've just drawn over the outline of the window. And then I can see exactly how my gingerbread man is going to fit. And what I'm going to do is place two pins through the corners of these through both, both um, plastic and the uh, fabric and now I can align him accurately on my hoop so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this aside for a minute and bring my hoop back in and now all I need to do is put, push a pin through each corner I hope you can see what I'm doing here and now I know that when I stitch that down I'm going to be able to um, it will be perfectly aligned so I'm going to tape my fabric in place and now I can remove the pins and my little piece of plastic we're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number 10 and that's going to secure my fabric to the hoop. And just to show you, there he is, he looks like he's opening the curtains. Because I've used a, a fussy cut for my window, I'm not going to be stitching the muntins, which is the cross bar in the window. I'm going to be skipping that. I'm going to show you how to do it on my machine which is a Brother Inovis V3. If you're not sure how to do it on yours have a look in your user manual or try and find a video on YouTube for your machine. It's always a good skill to learn to be able to skip colours and stitches. Okay so this is my panel and down here I have got an icon that looks like a needle and it's got a plus and a minus sign on it. That's usually an indication of where you'll find the facilities to advance through stitches and colours. So I'm going to press on that and that brings me to this panel here. And I've got some needles with plus and minuses and um, numbers next to them. That's for advancing through the stitches and going back through the stitches. So like if you have a thread break at any time, you can go back 10 or 20 stitches and then pick up where you left off. And you also somewhere have something that maybe looks like a cotton reel with a plus and minus. And that is for skipping through the colors. So at the moment I'm on color 11 and I want to advance to colour 12 so I'm going to press the cotton reel with the plus and that's now put me onto colour 12 and if you want your hoop to line up ready to stitch just press the plus one and that will bring your um, hoop in place ready to stitch it so this is going to be uh, the satin stitching around the window that we're going to be stitching next but first off we've got to do some trimming. So trim away all the excess fabric from around each and every piece that you've added to your house.
sewed your thread colour for the satin stitching around the window into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 12 load your thread colour for the shutters into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 13 and that's going to give you your placement outline for your fabrics place your fabric for the shutters over the outline and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 14 and that's going to secure your fabric to the hoop you're now going to trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line taking care of course not to cut your stitches making sure that you've got the right colour thread loaded into your machine for the satin stitching you're now going to stitch round number 15 and that's going to zigzag and then do the satin stitching around each of the shutters load your thread colour for the doorstep into your machine and then stitch round number 16 load your thread colour for the front door into your machine and then stitch round number 17 and that's going to give you your placement outline for your fabric you're now going to add your fabric for the door so place it over the outline and if you want to add mylar which is um, like a florist cellophane this is iridescent I get it on Amazon then place that over the top and then tape everything in place and put a little bit on the side so that it doesn't wrinkle you're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 18 and that's going to secure both to your hoop making sure that you've got your thread colour for the quilting of the door in, loaded in your machine you're now going to stitch round number 19 you can now tear your mylar away and it just pulls off from around the edge and then we're going to trim up the excess fabric from around the edge of the door load your thread colour for the satin stitching around the door into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 20 load your thread colour for the doorknob into your machine and then stitch round number 21 I'm now going to show you how to use metallic threads and it's important to follow a few guidelines for this if you want some bother free stitching the first off you need to change your needle and you want a 9014 needle in your machine it's got a slightly bigger eye so your thread can pass through it easily you also want to change your tension that's your upper thread tension and you do that in your machine settings I'll show you how in a minute and you're going to loosen your um, tension off mine's normally set to around about zero on my machine and I'm going to reduce it to minus three you also want to slow your machine right the way down to the slowest it will go in my case it's 350 stitches per minute that way it gives the thread a chance to unspool and um, go through your machine without snagging the other thing that you need to do as well is make sure that your thread comes off the spool horizontal not vertically 
so you don't want it coming off like that because it will twist as it pulls off you want it coming off of the spool like this so that it pulls off straight I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on there to hold that from unraveling so to do that you need a thread stand and if you haven't got one you can fashion one out of three elastic bands a plastic beaker and a pencil and all you want to do is chain your elastic bands together turn your beaker upside down place the middle elastic band over the cup so it now has ears take a pencil thread your thread onto your pencil and then sit it and put the ears of your bands over the pencil and that will allow your thread to pull off of the spool nice and easily without twisting I usually put this on the right hand side of my machine and then this uh, the, the thread I run up and through the two bobbin winder pieces and then I thread as normal I'm now going to show you how to change the settings on my machine which is the Brother Renovus V3 if you're not sure how to access the settings in yours then refer to your user manual or try and find a video for your brand of machine on YouTube so I'm going to go into this icon here that looks like a piece of paper and then I'm going to scroll back through the screens until I find the speed and tension settings my speed at the moment is set to 600 I'm going to change that to 350 and my embroidery tension is set to 0 and I'm going to change that to minus 3 you might have to tweak your machine slightly it's trial and error but once you um, get the hang of it and you know your machine and what settings it likes for uh, metallics then you'll be able to go to them again and again and again without thinking about it so I can now come out of here and we're going to start stitching so thread your machine up and then you're going to stitch round number 22 I've swapped my thread out for a red metallic and I'm still staying with the same settings then we're going to stitch round number 23 and that's going to do the baubles underneath the eaves here change your thread colour to the second lot of baubles underneath the eaves I've swapped mine out for green this time still with metallic thread and still with the same settings and then you're going to stitch round number 24 change your thread colour for the first set of baubles around the doorway into your machine I've loaded red metallic back into my machine again and then you're going to stitch round number 25 load your thread colour for the second set of baubles around the doorway into your machine I've loaded silver metallic into my machine for this and then you're going to stitch round number 26 load your thread colour for the hearts in, on the shutters into your machine and I'm going with gold metallic for this and then you're going to stitch round number 27 next is a heart on the door so load your thread colour for that into your machine I'm staying with the gold and then stitch round number 28 
So before we go any further, because I'm sw swapping back to regular thread now, I'm going to put my machine settings back to what they were before. So into the little page icon down here and then navigate to the settings and then put your tension back to whatever it was before mine was at zero and your speed as well of course and you can now swap your needle out for a regular 7511 needle as well so I'm now going to come out of this and get back to stitching the house we now come to the satin stitching around the peppermint candy at the top here so load your thread colour for that into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 29 and I'm using red for this you're now going to add your backing fabric so turn your hoop over place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place load your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 30 and that's going to secure your backing fabric in place you're now going to trim away your excess fabric from the back take care of course not to cut your stitching making sure that you've got a neutral thread loaded into your machine I'm going to be going with white you're now going to stitch round number 31 and that's going to do all the zigzagging around the raw edges load your thread colour for the peppermint candy into your machine and that's going to do each side of the house and then you're going to stitch round number 32 I'm going with red with this load your thread colour for the candy canes each side of the house into your machine and then stitch round number 33 and I'm going to go with green for this place your fabric for the trees over the outline and tape it in place load your thread colour for the trees into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 34 and that's going to secure your fabric and I've loaded an olive green into my machine Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the trees. Making sure that you've got the right colour thread loaded into your machine for the trees. You're now going to stitch round number 35 and that's going to zigzag the edges and then do the satin stitching. Mm -hmm. 
Load your thread colour for the satin stitch around the doorstep into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 36. Load your thread colour for the snow next to each side of the doorstep into your machine and then stitch round number 37. I want to show you how you can use uh, slightly more exotic fabrics to do the roof and for this I'm going to be using a faux fur. Now the one that I'm going to use is a little bit long for this but that's not going to deter me in showing you. So what you're going to do is place it over the outline as you would a normal fabric and then you want to place some solvy topper which is the thin plasticky feel type um, stabilizer over the top and that's going to control your pile while it's stitching. So then tape that in place and now you're going to stitch round number 38 and that's going to secure your fabric in place. And of course I'm staying with the white thread for this as well. We're now going to trim around the edge of the stitch line as we have for all of our fabrics. Just going to tidy up the bits. And you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch around number 39 and that's going to do the zigzagging and the satin stitching around the roof. We can now pull the Solvi topper off of the roof and your stitching will have uh, pierced it all the way around so it should come off really easily. We're now going to free this from the hoop. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edge. Taking care of course not to cut your stitches. All that remains for us to do is to dissolve all the excess stabilizer from around the edge. So take some warm water and a cotton bud, dip it in and just wipe it around the edge. If you've used a faux fur you can if you want to fluff it up a little bit so that it looks like cotton candy. I'm not going to bother because my fur is too long and it will hide half of the detail if I did. And that's our gingerbread house finished. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, share and like as well as click the bell icon to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's always lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below, along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and some long-term discount codes for you as well.